that's all very good. Uh, also, one thing that I would like to say about leading is the most important thing that the leader gets to do, apart from waving their arms, is the choice, la choix, the chanson. So you choose the song you want to lead. If you are in a group with people who are new and who don't know the book very well, um, I've seen it many, many times, all the time. I've seen people who will choose songs that are au-dessus, that just too far above their skill level. So if you're new, you need some kind of comfort zone, and the leader should choose their songs accordingly. Also, if you can, try as soon as possible to vary. So don't come every week and sing exactly the same song. Choose a new song. Think about some other song that you might have heard, or learn a new song. À chaque fois que c'est possible, essayez de faire des chants nouveaux, sans toujours rester dans les chants que vous connaissez déjà. Et chaque semaine, comme ça, que ça puisse changer et que on puisse améliorer les, 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 les savoir-faire. Okay, so now uh, I can let you can have uh, two minutes for any questions about leading. Two minutes. Stop calling. <laughs> Something I've noticed, uh, keeping keeping your arm movement within a certain yes. framework. Rather, sometimes people. Yes. Yes. It's a waste <laughs> of energy. Right. <laughs> so, uh, no extraneous body motion. That means uh, no excessive movements. And the reason is, if you are wildly swinging your arm, you will be losing time. Yeah. Micro, micro, microseconds, but you'll be losing a teeny bit, so your your rhythm will be imprecise. If you keep it within this frame like that, it's just easy to see and also easy to control. So it's all for the comfort of the class and also for clarity, for clarity to be very clear. Now I want to talk about. Yeah. Yep. Sure. And you said that you should start with the hand up. Yep. Uh, sometimes uh, we start at the beginning, maybe yep. four times, and yep. sometimes uh, at yep. the middle. Yep. Um, does that make a difference? Always beat the rest. So if you start from up, then the rest is. La pause is also beat. So you, you just start silence. with silence. And then the class comes in on the second half of the measure. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it's just. There are people who will start from the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to know, if you know those people and certain regions, that's something that's done. But I would say for a beginner's group, it's just easier to start from up. It's yeah, it's clear. Clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from the hand up is the cord. So about keying. Keying, uh, so this tonalité, um, we we uh, we have a, a tradition of uh, doing this a cappella without using a pitch pipe or any kind of instrument. There are historical reasons for this, but it's not really important. But we do this so that um, we can adjust easily to the situation uh, of the class the situation, the number of people present, maybe the voices, and also thinking about like today, for example, I wasn't going really high because I'm thinking we have to sing tomorrow. So we have to keep it slightly more comfortable for everyone. Um, so there is a theory for this, which I learned, I was taught, and I'm a strong believer in this theory because I think it's impossible to learn to key uh, hundreds and hundreds of songs out of your head. You need to have some theory behind it. So in order to be able to use this theory, I think it is not 100% obligatory, but it is helpful to be able to read round notes. So you have to note uh, 
uh, the key signatures. So A, C. If you can read those in round notes, that's helpful to begin with. So in every song, at the beginning of the song, it says C major, E minor, etc. En haut à gauche de chaque partition, dans ce livre-là, c'est marqué uh, D minor, or uh, C major, uh, A, etc. That is a note for the keyer, for the person who does the tonalité. Ça, c'est la tonalité, en fait, qui est écrite. So, there are sacred harp keys, which are approximately one to 1.5 steps below concert pitch. Concert pitch is what's on the, on the piano or the organ. So, like an A on the organ is about a G in sacred harp. Something like that. Donc, souvent, les tonalités qui sont indiquées ici, elles sont euh, en dessus, au dessus, en dessous, mm -hmm. en dessous de, la, de la tonalité du euh, d'un clavier yeah. euh, au la 440. Elles sont yeah. en dessous. Yeah. Somewhat. There are exceptions, but these sacred harp keys are recognizable if you have done it for a while. So, if I hear a keyer who is experienced give a key, I can sometimes guess the song from the key. So you can hear the key based on you recognize the like that's where that goes. So typical songs that you hear often. And the other thing that I must tell you is that the way that you the theory that makes it easy. So this is the facilitation. This is the easy part of this skill. When you have a reference song that you know very very well. On a une chanson qu'on connaît vraiment très bien. Which you can hear in your head. On peut entendre dans you hear not just the melody, but you hear the tonalité. En fait. mm -hmm. So there would be songs that I can hear in my head. And most people, after a long time, after a short time or a long time, depending on how much musical training you might have, you can hear that in your head as well, the tonalité. You hear where that is. So, um, like, for example, the song 47 on the bottom, which is Irumea, we sing that. So, that's A minor, and I say, la, fa, la. So, that song gives me A minor for the whole book. Uh -huh. Right? So, le, le fait de bien connaître ce chant-là, 47 en bas, ça, permet, ça te permet d'avoir la tonalité dans la tête. Et du coup, tous les chants qui sont de la même tonalité, la mineur, ça peut marcher. Du coup, cette tonalité-là, il peut la reprendre pour chaque, chacun des chants en la mineur. Du so, coup, you have a reference song for these, these keys, for the uh, individual tonalité, you have a reference song, and then you just use that reference song to key for every song in the book. So, uh, an example for me of, um, let's say, uh, E minor, 39 on the top. 39? 39 on the top. Yeah. 39. Detroit. Mm -hmm. Do you guys sing this song? Do you know this song? Um, 39. I'm looking for a song in E minor. Do you know a song in E minor? Uh, I'm sure I know. Okay. When don't know. Uh, how about uh, how about uh, Evening Shade? Do you know that one? Not the group. I do. Not the group. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking for an E minor song that you might know already. Um, Wyndham. Okay. Fine. Um, That's 38 on the bottom, mm -hmm. right, okay, right. So here is, so for Wyndham is E minor, so here we go with an E minor arpeggio. La, fa, la, fa, la, la, la. Let's try to sing the notes of this song. 
sensitive this skill can be in terms of having the singing be good or bad, let's take it up maybe a half step to a step and see what happens. <clears throat> to the beginning, the first version of the tonadite, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. So that is to just indicate to you, when you are learning to key, pay attention to this feedback, your, your own voice, mm -hmm. and also the voice of others, and also the faces of others, <laughs> to see whether people are comfortable, because they might not be, and you can change it after the notes, and that is an important thing also especially when you are beginning to learn this skill. Don't be afraid to re-key after the notes. It's very important to observe the visages of the singers when we give the tonality, because sometimes it exprime so much that it's uncomfortable to sing in that tonality, that at the end of the notes, you don't have to change a little bit to make it a little more comfortable, or maybe a little more comfortable. 